rolling. So last week, I started to allow my daughter to watch Tiger King. And last night, I got the father award because she's actually picked sides after three or four episodes. So just as a situation that we're all dealing with, I couldn't resist. I actually wanted her to see adversity in life because we're all dealing with adversity. Change. Our willingness and ability to accept change and uncertainty has to be part of what's coming into our lives right now. However, I'm at my desk and I know some of you will essentially learn that you can work from home and so there will be a lot more people working from home. I've been doing it for eight years. There are pros and cons. One con is that you're socially distanced from people in general. One pro is that you can do things at home that you normally can't do like at a cubicle or, or at an office. And one of them would be like simple stretches and exercises that you can do at your desk. So today we're gonna to go over simple stretches and exercises you can do at your desk to help control these muscle imbalances that develop as part of sitting at a desk all day long. So let me I show a few things and then we'll actually be able to uh, go over, you can do it with me. So you'll see that my legs are at 90 and my hips are at 90. If my arm is here, my arm is at 90. Nowhere in nature, or very few things in nature at, are at 90, 90 degrees. Nature doesn't have right angles. And so it doesn't, it's not normal to think that we can have right angles in our own body and expect to be optimal. It's just not the way it is. So let's start from head to toe and do some exercises while we're sitting here. Feel free to write them down. Again, I can't tell you how many to do or how long to do it. It just has to come from you relative to your tolerance and acceptance of, it, acceptance of the, the action. So let, let me just explain certain situations what, and then we'll go through each individual exercise. Again, as we're sitting here all day long, our bodies accommodate to what we do. Our head will come forward and our shoulders will round. It's called a forward head and shoulders postural dysfunction. In order to fix that, we need to stretch the chest, strengthen the back muscles, and bring the head back. So the head can go into certain motions. It can go, and go ahead and do this with me if you like. We'll just do a few. If you want to keep doing it as I'm talking, that's fine too. So in order to do some of the stretches and exercises of the head, I want you to keep your mouth closed, your tongue in the roof of your mouth, but don't clench your teeth. So your teeth are not touching. All right, ready. F flexion, it's forward, up. One, two, three, four. If you want to use um, additional support, you can push your head a little bit, push your head down a little bit, just keep going. Again, inside of your tolerance, do not go to the pain threshold. Rotation, right? Three, four, if you need to push a little bit, push a little bit. So there's um, flexion, rotation, and then lateral bending. So bring your ears towards your shoulder. This is the one that most people are most restricted on. Again, I'm either gonna hold the stretch or I'm gonna do more repetitions of the stretch or some type of combination. Now there's one more, it's a little bit more complicated. It's called ipsilateral flexion. So you come down and to kind of at an angle. Now realize that there is no joint in the neck or the head that allows you to circumduct. I do not suggest that anyone do that. There's not it's not necessary if you can go through all four of these motions, flexion, extension, rotation, and ipsilateral flexion. You don't need to do circumduction. So the next thing is, how do we address the shoulders? Tight muscles in the chest, simple stretch, just sitting here. Now you can try and do motion. So one, two, three, four, five, 
And maybe at the fifth one, you just hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Just try and touch your shoulder blades together. And then come out. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, to strengthen the muscles in our back, I have certain situations, I have several options. Here's a band. Everybody has it. You can buy it anywhere. You can just kind of do a motion like this where you're bringing your elbows back and trying to touch your elbows behind your back. This is strengthening the muscles in the upper neck, back, and shoulders. Rear delts, rhomboids, traps. If you can't do that, you might be wondering why there's two cans of baked beans here. 16 ounces. We can do what are called reverse flies. Again, this is not something you would do in the office, but it's totally normal at home, right? I'd actually put my head right on the table and just come up. Actually, this would be a kind of a reverse seated row. And then this would be a reverse fly. Simple, very simple. So let's look at our core, our abs. This exercise isn't going to make you strong automatically, but remember muscles that don't get used will go to sleep. They become inhibited. So there's a really neat exercise you can do sitting at your desk. If you put both of your hands on your desk and you push down, you will actually contract your abdominal muscles. You're not gonna lift your butt off the table, but you, you, my, my abdominal muscles are contracting right now, right? I can hold this for three to five seconds, relax. Three to five seconds, relax. But just try this. Try putting both hands on the table and pushing down moderately hard or as hard as you want or as hard as you can tolerate. The next action is to go under the table, put your feet, put your hands under the table and, and try and lift up. When you lift up, you actually contract the muscles in your back. This is a, this is a very simple isometric contraction. Again, not going to make you terribly strong, but it can wake your muscles up. It can make them uninhibited. You're telling your body that I need these muscles to work. And once the muscles start working, they help create more stability in the body. So just maybe five seconds of pushing down. One, two, three, four, five. Pushing up. One, two, three, four, five. Very simple. Repeat as much and as often as you like. Another one we can do is called the seating, seated figure four. It's just a way to stretch out the hip muscles, IT band, I'm oh, sorry, the psoas muscle. Nope, piriformis muscle, sorry. But one thing you're gonna notice in me are my muscle imbalances. So if I put my left leg over my right knee, you see how far down this leg can go? I mean, it's almost parallel here. That's pretty good. I can lean into it. I can get a good stretch. It feels good. Again, hold five, 10 seconds. Bring it out. Bring it back in. Lean forward. Pull in. You can even push down. Really good. Now, look at my imbalance on this side. This is my postural dysfunction. Look at that. This comes from an imbalance in my hip and an imbalance in my hip rotators. I cannot push any more down on this. It does not feel good. I cannot come forward anymore. So one thing you can do if you're really tight is you can extend this leg and essentially bring it down a little bit more and take some pressure off it. Now I can go just do light pressure, holding it. And as I warm up and warm into the idea, I can bring my leg back. And now I can put a little bit more pressure through my elbow, lean forward a little bit more. But really, look at the difference of this. Look at, look at this. If you have an imbalance, it's totally normal. The thing about it is, it's, it's here, it's in my hip. It's not affecting my functional performance. It's not giving me pain in part because my strength 
and flexibility are somewhat balanced in the rest of my rest of my body, rest of my hips and my core, but this one muscle group is really tight. Now, to finish off, I, I do this little exercise where I stretch my low back and I cheat a little bit. So watch this. I'm gonna run my hands down my leg, to my feet, pull my feet up, and then push my feet down, and I stretch just a little bit more. Again, hold it five to 10 seconds. Repeat, bring your hands down your legs, lift your feet up, grab the bottom of your feet, push your feet down flat to the floor, and you just kind of cheat yourself into a little bit more of a stretch. Again, can't tell you how much to do, how often, it really depends on you. One of the best things you can do is just to get up every certain amount of time, set a, set a timer, just get up and walk around. Other people, they'll, they'll put rubber bands around their self and they'll, they'll ping themselves if they're not doing it correctly. So there's all types of motivational things you can do. So, very good. Look, I, I even feel better. Look, you even see in the short amount of time that I was doing this, look at that. What did I do it for five or 10 seconds? It's so much better with just that short amount of time. Maybe holding it for pressure anywhere from five to 15 seconds. Relax, you can bring it up, bring it down. I mean, it, I literally feel it. And that's why I just sprung in my, that into my head to, to, make, to mention it again. Anyways, there you are. I wanna mention one thing. I've gone into my library and I've looked at some of my old books and I've started rereading some of my uh, favorite books. And just as, a um, FYI, my favorite author is Stuart Wilde, and of all of his books that he's written, a lot of them, um, Infinite Self, 33 Steps to Reclaiming Your Inner Power, really good, really good. It's my favorite book. He's very sarcastic in his writing. It's very funny. All right, guys, till next time, take care.